everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Dana, AKA Blondie Knots here on YouTube. And while most of the time I would be coming on here to tell you that we're about to create something crochet related today and for a couple of my next upcoming videos, it's gonna be a little bit different. You probably know by now if you are on my channel, but we are moving, we are moving into our first house. So today is actually our last day in our apartment and way to go me cutting it all the way up until the end. But clearly I need to address this situation behind me, clean it up, get it all packed up. And I thought it would be a perfect time to come on and pack my craft space with you. You guys have been sitting here with me for quite a few months now. So I thought it'd be fun too, to just go through my old bins. I haven't gone through since I moved in here three years ago. A lot of just the random stuff that accumulates in your craft room. One, pack it all up, maybe get rid of some stuff. And then also I did ask you guys if you had any questions for me. So I will answer a couple of the questions while we work through this craft space. So I did come prepared. I went and grabbed a Starbucks. So I am ready to really start packing this space up and get it moving ready. I'm hoping this is not going to take me too long. But if you're interested in moving vlogs or anything along the lines of packing, organizing, moving, all the good things, that will kind of be a couple of videos on my channel coming up here in the next few weeks. And I'm also filming a moving vlog right now as we speak so i'll be tackling like the rest of the apartment with you and then i'll show you my empty apartment what it looks like so you can see the space i've been in for the last few years all that good stuff so with all that being said i am ready to just start tackling this and packing up once we get some momentum going and moving i will get into answering a couple of questions that were asked of me too by the way my go-to starbucks drink is grande shaken express hold the classic two pump sugar-free vanilla and oat milk instead of regular milk. So, all right, let's go, cheers. So first place we are going to start is down here on the floor and we're gonna tackle this whole entire cubby cube situation. So I figured it would probably be best if I started with the bins at the bottom first and then that way I can pad the top with yarn. I do also have yarn in quite a few other places. Uh, one of them's in a bedroom box already and then some are in the ottoman because our ottoman has storage So I have a bunch of blanket yarn in there and uh, we'll have to figure out what's in there But yeah, I'm just gonna start a rapid fire going through these. I have three Squares in here three flower squares. I don't know why This is my stuff for when I make lavender bookmarks So I have that I keep in a separate bag. Oh, I have these hats which are so cute. They're like little straw sun hats and i did actually have plans to make an amigurumi for my markets this this summer with them but i ended up just not getting around to it i might do it for my september market or so but we'll see leftover jewels from this sewing machine never know when you'll need those loads more squares here oh my goodness lots of squares Testing my Stanley pattern. Some fanny packs that never came to flourishing. It's such a bummer that there's a trademark on this smiley face because those smiley face fan, those smiley face fanny packs were so cute. And I, now I can't do anything with them. I know I could like take them off and make them just regular like circle ones, but I don't know, that's like not as fun. Two set of drumsticks, just kidding. These are giant knitting needles, um, size, 15 millimeter. I have two sets because they are from Wool and the Gang and I have purchased two sets of, um, how would you call? I don't know, the yarn kits. One of them sitting in here. I, I purchased two of those and so each one came with its own set of needles. Loads and loads of granny squares. I don't have time to go through each one, but here's a bunch in this first one. I will show you this though, because this is going to be in an upcoming video. Here's a sneak peek. I'm gonna redo this idea I had here. Here is the uh, the first draft I had made of it. So something to look forward to. This is gonna be an upcoming video, excited for that. These are all sun, sunflower squares, sunburst squares, whatever. I was making a blanket at one point. I have half the blanket laying around somewhere. We'll get to that. Lastly in this bin guys, I have mountains i'm talking mountains of hexagon granny squares because again another blanket that never became anything if i had brown tan green i meant black 
here's brown. <laughs> and lastly, gray. I should map these out and see what kind of a blanket I can make with even just these because what a waste to have them sitting around like this. I've also never finished a blanket. And the last thing I have in here are these eight millimeter knitting needles that I guess I've never opened, but they look nice and we will get into those surely at some point. Bin one is done, right on. Here we go. Bucket hat for my summer video that I showed you. Tote bag from my summer video. Recreating this bag from Pinterest that I showed you as well in that video. Another bucket hat I showed you. Let me bring you down here. Here, come sit on the floor with me. <laughs> okay, here we go. Project I need to continue to frog. It was a test pattern I did and I just made a size way too big for myself so it doesn't fit properly. Extra bag strap for bag purse making of course. My husband's little brother got me these little Harry Potter kits, crochet kits, look at that. And I just never got that far in it because it's, you literally use like, I think a 3.5 or maybe even three millimeter hook for amigurumi and it's a no for me dog, but I feel bad. I should probably finish it. Way more bag making tools. Some random blue yarn. Purse handles, purse I made with this cutie opening here. Love that. Put this chain on it. Never use it. <laughs> oh, here's another whip. I was making a Louis Vuitton bucket hat and I kept getting frustrated, so I put it away and I didn't come back to it. Didn't come back to it yet. circle wooden rings pink bows <laughs> more bag straps elastic for bracelets stuff like that more purse handles that little piece of leather that came through in our Mew Mew bag oh this is something I do kind of want to finish with you guys I was making a Louis Vuitton what's it called help me with the words like tote almost but this is how far I got and I stopped. Ah, I have all, so, oh my gosh, so many cute accessories for this bag and it would just be fun to make. But I don't know about posting it because a lot of people got so pressed about that Mew Mew bag. So I don't know. We'll see if I, um, we'll see if I post it or not. More straps, options for purses, some more. This might just be fishing wire for who knows what I was using this for. Not fishing. Oh, this is cute. I um, I saw this bag on Pinterest and then again, I just went on Canva and recreated the graph for myself and did it. I don't know why, oh, because I bought a new black and it looks like this and then I got mad and I never finished it. But look how cute this bag is. I think I was gonna make this like my makeup bag or something. Oh, it's so cute with the cats. Maybe we can, maybe a video once I get moved will be like, tackling some of these whips in here, maybe. And last thing in here, oh, this is an old apron. I can segue with this into one of the first questions, which was, is this my full-time job? And if it is, what did I do before YouTube? So yes, I do YouTube full-time now, along with making patterns and all that kind of stuff. But before YouTube, my whole like, work history career. My very first job was at Abercrombie and Fitch for three months. Then I moved and worked at a daycare as a preschool teacher for maybe four months max. I kept getting so sick and the hours and the pay was not good. So I left there and I went to a restaurant actually. I went to a little family owned pizzeria and I ended up working there for eight or nine years I worked there and I started as a busser and in two weeks my boss was like, no more busing. Like you're gonna be waitressing tables. If you need alcohol, like." Like other people will run it for you so because I wasn't 18 yet so I did that and I served there for a really long time obviously I worked my way up to basically being a manager and my bosses would go away in the summer and I would watch over the restaurant and pretty much help out 
with um, keeping the restaurant like straight. There was a couple of us that kind of did that, but I had my own key because I opened up a lot of the time or shut it down a lot. So I was very trusted there. But anyway, that was my first job. And then I worked out all through high school. And so I ended up going to beauty school right out of high school. And so I went down to two days there. So I would go five days at beauty school in a row. We would go from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Every day it was an 11 month program, like speed round 11th month. So I got my cosmetology license. While I was doing that, I was going to the restaurant two days a week. So I had no days off during this time of my life. And it was really a crazy time of life, but um, did that. And then after beauty school, I ended up working in a hair salon. Got to a point where I could have my own chair. I just rented a chair and had my own clientele. I did that for a couple years, then COVID hit. All this time, I was still working at the restaurant a couple days a week, so I did this consistently. I really kind of scaled back a little bit at the restaurant because I was only there like two days a week or so, but I still had a key. I would open whatever, work 12-hour shifts, all that stuff. Um, then I met my husband, so he was living in Washington at the time, and I decided that hair was not my passion anymore. I didn't love it. It was a lot. It was very mentally taxing, especially when you're someone who's like low-key and introvert presenting so extroverted was really exhausting for me it just it was a whole lot of things so anyway i decided i was going to move to washington with my husband who obviously wasn't my husband at the time he was my boyfriend at the time and so yeah i quit hair i quit the restaurant and then i moved to washington i worked at world market as a assistant manager for a while until we moved here to virginia and then here in Virginia, I worked at Starbucks for a year. I was a manager over there at Starbucks. And then I moved to a restaurant again. And I served actually up until February or March is actually when I quit. And um, I was just working there a couple days a week. I wasn't doing any management. They asked me to move up into management. And I just, I didn't want to be that involved in a restaurant. So that's why I kind of went full force into YouTube. Luckily, I also have an awesome husband who supported me through doing that and told me that I should just quit and go full-time YouTube. And I'm so, so blessed to have had that opportunity to be able to do that. So yes, I just started doing YouTube full-time a couple months ago. Like I said, I think March or April even. I think it was actually April I quit. April. So yeah, I worked in the restaurant for almost two years before I quit. Yeah. So that was a long-winded question, but you know, there's been quite a few jobs and twists and turns, but I love being a restaurant manager at that restaurant. I'm so glad I do have a license in cosmetology because it is always something you know I can say I did and I keep I keep it current and updated so I can at least shop at the beauty supply store and I guess if it's the thing I ever felt called to go back to I could but I don't see that for me and I think that's totally okay so that's where I am with that and that's the end of the second bit <laughs> safe to say I probably honestly don't need this apron anymore this is my backup apron so I think I'm going to part with this and say thank you for serving me I served it really. Thank you for serving me well. Peace be with you. <laughs> okay, next fin. I don't know if you can see, but I have a fin here helping me pack and he's in front of our next fin we need to do. So maybe we'll grab something else. We can let him rest a little bit there. I feel like he's getting a little anxious with the move, which makes me sad, but today's the last day. He has to like bear down on the box moving and then we'll move him into his new place but he's a very sensitive little soul so I'm hoping he is uh doing okay and knowing he's moving with me a couple other little things I'll pack from over at my uh sewing desk really quick while well he just moved now but I grabbed him already anyway my scale for weighing yarn that I never use because y'all always ask me how much yarn of something I used and do I have an, ever have an answer for you? Negative. This photo, which I showed you guys um, already, this is gonna hang in our new office, so we'll pack him, of course. This lovely lady found her in a antique store. I need to just pop her in a frame, but she is gorge. You guys know I love uh, French history, and so I found this, had to have it, just have to frame her. It's like a weird cloth material almost, but her dress, we love to see it. Last bin over here, market tablecloth. Love to add those to add some layering um, elements to my market table. Would highly recommend doing tablecloths of any kind. I switch them every season. So my winter one is like a more burlapy type of deal. And then spring and summer, I have uh, flowers. Extra project bag, whatever. And the rest of this bin, just backup market stuff. So we have more labels, pins, tags, all the good things there. 
wooden dowels for projects. Pink tablecloth I bought that was way too pink for me. Too like bubble gummy. These are my chicken beanies for winter time, winter season. If you buy a chicken from me, it does come with a beanie. So that's pretty cool. Extra cinnamon sticks from my snowmen that I made last market season. Mini tags. Sometimes I need even smaller ones. Scarfs. Mini scarfs. And these are for my froggy Santas in the wintertime extras. Random piece of yellow fabric. <laughs> More scarfs. In the winter, I really like to decorate my little guys per season because I just feel like it's cute. Extra phone case. No clue why. These little, what are these called? Craft clamps. I don't know. Got them at Dollar Tree. Had to have them. Never used them. Story of my life. <laughs> okay, some extra flowers that I cut up because I make these for my spring and summer froggies. So these are extra. This llama that I got at World Market about 700 years ago and don't have the heart to get rid of him. So he comes everywhere with me. He's been through every single move I've been through. <laughs> I have this thing of miscellaneous tiny fabrics and other tiny items. This is from when I do miniatures. This is just extra miniature stuff. So I am gonna keep this. Stand it up right over here somewhere. Perfecto. Last thing in the bin. We're powering through these guys. This cute little heart bowl that my mom got me that I love. And then um, I have so many different style knobs in here that I have bought for DIY projects. So let's see what we got. Two of these adorable little fox handles. So cute. I have this really cool pool handle. I don't know what that'll be for, but I have it. I have this black handle with a gold rim. Love. Two of them. One tree stump handle. Okay. And three of these, which is like a wood on wood handle here with some gold. Okay. Don't know. Bought these so long ago. I remember my brother was in college when I bought these. So it's been quite some time. So we've tackled all of our cubbies now, which is really a good feeling. And I think we'll just move up again. Okay, and we'll probably now just work up here on some of this stuff. I do also have space bags. So there is an option to space bag my yarn if need be as well. Just thought I'd mention. I grabbed my laptop because I thought we could do another question. I thought they were all on my phone, but for some reason I had put them on my laptop. So, okay then. Let's see, just answered that one. Uh, another one. Would I get a dog or more cats? No, <laughs> is the, the very short answer to that question is no, I would not. Finn has had a lot of health problems, not a lot, but enough that it has cost us a lot of money. He has diabetes and so it's very expensive um, to have a pet with diabetes and I've never had an animal that needed special medicine and food and vet appointments and all that stuff. And it's a lot and it's a lot of stress and um, honestly, I think our next step after having pets is going to be having kids. And I know a lot of people do both of those things, but that's not something we feel like we can um, really handle and give our best selves to both. So now as pets, later will be children. Um, also, it's just, it's hard to have a pet that you care and love so much. And I know like that's the whole point of them, but at the same time, it is just a lot of extra responsibility. Like I said, it's just a lot of, it's a lot of stress. You wanna make sure they're doing good all the time and all that stuff. And so, yeah, it's a lot of work, but um, I wouldn't give Finn up for the world. Like he is quite literally my heart and soul. And so he's, he's the best furry thing to ever happen to me. Enough before it gets emotional. <laughs> But I guess that does go into the next question that I was asked quite a lot is, do we want to have kids? The answer is absolutely. We definitely want to have kids and we definitely want to have two. Ideally, probably a boy and a girl or two boys, honestly. I never saw myself as a girl mom, but my mom especially always used to joke with me. Um, and me and my husband joke about all the time that we're just going to have two girls. And that's totally fine. I, as long as they're healthy, like... I don't care what I have at the end of the day, but you know, if someone asked me, I would love one of each or 
probably two boys. I have a lot of boys names picked out. So either way, as long as they're healthy, that is truly all I care about. But yes, kids are definitely in our life plan, God willing. So next thing I found here is this mini kit. I freaking love making these guys. I have another one up here that I will pull down and show you later once we get over more there. But this is something one of you, and I hope you still watch my channel because this is a long time ago. One of you asked if I would make a video recording myself making these. This takes me so long to make. It says it's for ages, not for, not for children under three, not for children under 23, okay? This is freaking hard. I'm not gonna lie. This is very hard, but it's so fun and it's so rewarding at the end. It takes me a long, long time and now I'll have the extra space where I could set this up and walk away from it. I will probably film myself doing this. So if you're out there, my one friend that wanted to see me put together Happy Corner, I got you. <laughs> Maybe a video will be coming at some point eventually. Next thing I have here is just like loads of packing supplies. Also, I'm a hoarder of a good bag. So any cutesy bag that I get, I literally keep it and I reuse it for other gifts sometimes. But honestly, I feel like that can kind of backfire because one time I gave my friend a gift I made, a crochet item I made in a Lush bag. And as I was bringing it to her, I'm like, oh my God, she's gonna think I got her Lush. And so I said, it's not Lush, it's something I made. I just reused the bag. But um, I do preface that now because I don't want you thinking you're getting something from Anthro and then it's a amigurumi frog. My poly mailers, my larger mailers. <laughs> oh, bookmarking supplies. I got into bookmarks for a while, which was so fun. I stopped, but I should kind of pick them up again. That was really fun, that's trash. And then we have some different assortments of tissue paper. That was our very last bin and this one, oh, just kidding, we have one more of like this. And that one was under my desk. Also under my desk, some butcher paper for flowers and mini pots that were too small for what I had in mind and I thought I would use them again and guess what, I haven't. First desk drawer. <laughs> Here's a cool thing I have. Some vintage crochet hooks in here, which are some of my grandma's crochet hooks I just got when she passed away. So I do have some of these. I have a really fun video planned this winter that will involve vintage crochet. So if you are at all interested in anything like that, December is gonna be a really fun month on my channel. I know that's like so far away but I've already planned a lot of it and um, I have some really exciting projects planned for us. So I hope you will be looking forward to December. Oh, I did buy these too. They're like little mini um, gingerbread houses almost. And I'm gonna use those for probably my mystery plushies for winter. Okay, here I found my cat graph I made. If you can, whoop. I found my cat graph I made. Hopefully you can see that. Like I told you, just the old fashioned pen and paper, Louis Vuitton graph. First draft of that graph. <laughs> okay, that is that drawer completed. And let's do another question. Rural or urban living? Rural, for sure. Where we're moving to is in comparison to where we are now, it's very rural, very much indeed, but I like a slower paced life and I am okay with not being in the hustle bustle grind and trying to keep myself from falling victim to feeling like I need to be doing that in order to be successful because I'm young. Like I do definitely do a lot of hustling. I feel like when it comes to YouTube, like I work really hard to make this channel the best I can make it, but I don't feel the need to being in the hustle. Like I don't feel like I need to live here anymore. It was cool to live in the city, I guess, and like be walking distance from a lot of cool restaurants. Starbucks, like all that kind of stuff, but it's not like speaking to me anymore. So definitely rural living for me, 100%. Someone else asked me how many tattoos I have and if I could do a tattoo tour. Um, I didn't wear the proper shirt for this because a lot of them I probably can't show you right now, but I have 13 total tattoos. I think it's 13. All of them I got before I was 24 I think so from 18 to 24 I got my first tattoo at 17 but I have a giant cross on my back that was my first one I have some quotes on my rib cage I think that was my second one 
Um, I have a giant, maybe I can show you this one, giant ripped American flag here on my other side of my rib cage. This whole side of my body, any tattoos I have on this side are in color and this side is all black and white. So I have my lupine here, as you guys have seen. This is a tattoo my brother and I both have. His is in black and white though. He and I have three matching tattoos. So this is one. We both have our bull skull. His is just lower. And then we both have our cash tattoo on the inside of our arm. And my other two cousins have it as well. So we all have that. We got it together, which was really cool. This tattoo here I got from my dad after he passed away. So this is probably the one that holds the most significance, if not probably the only one that holds significance, honestly. But yeah, this one means a lot to me. Uh, what else do I have going on? How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, I have ten. Ten. Okay. And then um, I'll insert the photo in case you didn't see from my Taylor Swift video. I do have my tattoos are out in this picture, but I have a cactus on my left thigh there in color. And then on my right, I have another giant quote. It's a Mother Teresa quote. And then I have just a giant random piece on my shin. I think that's everyone. Yes, that's everyone. Um, yeah, but like I said, the only one with significance is really on my wrist here for my dad. And I guess, honestly, this inside arm one with my cousins and my brother is quite significant to me as well. And like I said, I haven't got a new tattoo in a really long time and I'm debating. I go back and forth if I wanna get more or not. Um, they're not like really something I look at too much anymore, which is so interesting. Like I don't see them on myself as much except for this one. Maybe because it's in color and it's so big. Everything else is just kind of like, it's just a part of me now, I guess. I don't know. I can't imagine not having them, to be honest. But I don't know if I'd get more. And if I would, what I would... Well, I have plenty of things I would get. I just have to do, decide where I'd want them and if I want them. You know what I mean? But I have for a while wanted something yarn crochet related. So that's a possibility. And my original plan with this bull skull was actually to get a full sleeve Western, uh, mostly Arizona style tattoos. Like I was going to do the five C's on my arm and a lot of like the, the state bird, state everything for Arizona. I was going to dedicate to this arm. So TBD, we'll see how that goes. I only have one tattoo artist I trust and he's in Arizona. So that's probably the biggest reason why I haven't got a tattoo in many a year. He is the only man I trust with my tattoos. <laughs> and I, I love him dearly and I haven't seen him in a long time. So if I ever got another one, it would be from Mark. But if I don't see Mark, there is no tattoos. So that's that. Back to work and then we'll get a couple more out of the way. I'm gonna turn the AC down more because I'm sweating bullets. Surely it's not my three espresso shots. Surely it's just the apartment, right? As why is it with packing that it always looks worse before it looks better? Why does it stress you out so much? Why, why do we have so much stuff as people? <laughs> okay, can we see this drawer? more fun cute little things to share with you this right here is like a it's like a Polaroid printer so the cool thing about this is that you can take your pictures on your phone make sure you have a picture that you love first before you print it off and then you just have to buy these cute mini Polaroid picture things you load them into here and you can print off pictures in Polaroid form. So that is a really cool thing I found a long time ago. I've had this for quite a few years and I absolutely love it. My husband is really good about just making me things just cause. And this is a coupon book that he made for me a while ago. It has like a free walk at my choice of park. Uh, one free movie of my choice, free full house vacuum and it has not been hole punched, so I need to use this. Uh, one free cooked dinner. He also liked designs. <laughs> Puts little designs around the corners, which is so adorable. Yeah, look, this one has a different one. One free massage. And then when I use them, he hole punches them. So like this one I used. <laughs> one free Chipotle. 
And yeah, of course I use this one. One free new pair of shoes, free trip to Dairy Queen, one free we paint together, like a nice paint night. So this is so cute and I'm going to whip this out at the new house and make him do some of these things that he's probably definitely forgotten about. While we're on that, I thought I would show you something else really cute that he gave me last night, actually, just like as a just cuz. As you know, like packing up and moving is super stressful and I've been trying to do a lot of it while he's like at work and stuff so he doesn't have to worry too much about it when he comes home. So, sorry ladies, but I received the world's best wife award. Best of luck to you next year. I'm sure you guys all put in all of your effort and work, but unfortunately I did win this. So yeah, better luck next year to all of you guys, but here's my award. <laughs> anyway, this is so cute. He sent me an email that looked like an official invite. Join us for the best wife award ceremony. And then he sent me a whole thing. We're thrilled to invite you to our exclusive best wife award ceremony where the event was just in our living room, what time it was at, and you know, we'll be doing speeches for the winner and we'd love for all the nominees to show up. And so he hosted this whole award ceremony for me. This was a real honor to receive such an award. We'll pack that away with some other stuff later, but that is just a really funny, cute little thing I thought I would share with you guys really fast. think of a great way to transfer all my crochet hooks except for throwing them into this ziploc bag oh okay that's fine no it's fine it's fine <laughs> everything's gonna be fine oh this just feels so wrong anyway this is a good time for another question which was what is my favorite crochet hook size and what is my favorite weight yarn? So, favorite hook size, I would honestly probably have to say like size I'm most comfortable with would be either a 4.5 or a five millimeter. That's just what is most comfortable, it feels like, in my hand. And then my favorite yarn, clothing-wise especially, because I feel like that's what I like to make the most, honestly probably a two or a three weight yarn is probably my favorite. Four is definitely not my favorite. I do work with it a lot because it's easy but definitely a three or a four and cotton is probably my favorite form of working with yarn. So that's just that. Someone else asked me how many of my whips am I bringing with me to the new house? All of them. Every single whip I've made is coming with me to this house. I can decide later what is going to maybe stay or go, but right now I'm just gonna pack everything and see what happens once I get there. I feel like maybe we're making good progress. It's at a point where it's hard to tell. So I'm just gonna keep trucking along. And then once I'm packing out my yarn, I'll answer the last question. I didn't like purposely leave this one for last, but it was definitely the most asked question and it was how my husband and I met. So I will definitely answer that one last, probably also because it's gonna be the longest of my answers. There's no real short story to how we met. It's kind of a long story. <laughs> so I can explain that while I'm chucking yarn into a space bag basically. But okay, let's keep working on this and I'm gonna time lapse you so we can see what happens, how quickly I can get it done. <laughs> yarn in here I think I can explain while I'm doing this I don't know let's hope but okay basically here is the story on my husband and I so my husband and I actually met in 
kindergarten and we were best friends uh, all the way up until fourth grade. And in the fourth grade, his parents ended up getting a divorce and he ended up having to move schools because his mom moved farther away. So he moved farther away from me and he obviously left my school. Now in fifth grade, back when I went to school, we didn't have phones like kids have now. So we definitely lost contact for quite some time. So fast forward to graduating high school, I ended up dating someone for five years after high school, very on and off. And eventually we just officially broke up for good. So my, one of my dear friends also from kindergarten was in the hair salon getting her hair done because I'm a hairdresser, like I told you earlier. And she used to come to me all the time and we were talking about boys we used to think were hot back in school. And somehow we got on the topic of laughing about our old crushes from being kids. You know, guys, we had these insane crushes on when you're in fourth, fifth grade and he came up and my friend was like, oh my God, dude, you need to just look him up on Facebook and see if he has a Facebook account. And I had to remember how to spell his last name because his last name is kind of confusing to spell. It's a very different last name and no one ever knows how to spell, but I remembered. And so I typed it in and I found him. And I'm like, oh my God, I found him and he's actually really hot. Like what the hell? And me, me and my friend are like getting excited about it. And she's like, friend request him, friend request him. And I'm like, no, I'm not gonna message him. That's so ridiculous. Or friend request him, that's so ridiculous. He's not gonna remember me, whatever. Eventually she convinced me to friend request him. So I friended him and within two minutes, he responded. He added me as a friend and he messaged me and he said, oh my God, how are you? And that was literally the beginning of the end. Later down the road, come to find out, he used to look me up from time to time on Facebook and uh, he saw I was in a relationship, so he never reached out. But long story short, we got to talking more and more and I was supposed to, he was supposed to come visit me in Arizona because he was living in Washington at the time. He was in the Navy and he was supposed to come visit me in Arizona and COVID hit because we met at the end of 2019. So COVID really threw our plans for a loop and we ended up not being able to meet face to face until September. So we would just like Zoom or not Zoom, Skype call and stuff like that. So that was, oh my gosh, how many months? 10 months of just like Skyping only. We were considered in a relationship at this point, but it was, you know, it's so hard when you haven't even like been with someone face to face. So finally September came. Uh, he was able to take leave from the military for three days. I flew out to Washington. He picked me up at the airport. I couldn't stay on base with him, so we had to get a hotel and we just ended up staying near Seattle at the time. And I stayed there with him for three days. And at the end of the three days, like it just felt, even at the end of day one, it felt so natural and we were so just like, yeah, this is, this is it for sure. As he was driving me to the airport, um, at the end of those three days, he's like, I know this is crazy, but you should just move here and move in with me. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, I can live out of the barracks come, what was this? March, March. And why don't you just move here with me and live here with me? And I'm like, that's crazy. I don't know. And then I thought about it on the plane around home and I'm like, what's keeping me here? Like everything's pointing to me doing this. And so I did it. I like told Jay quit my jobs and stuff. And my apartment lease was up in February. Um, so of course I worked like the rest of the year and stuff. And I went one other time in November for, I wanna say three days again. So we only spent a total of six days in person together before we moved in together into our 500 square foot studio. That was our first place together in Washington. And I loved living in Washington. We had an amazing time in that studio. Like our relationship has just been so easy from the start. And so when people say like, when you know, you know, I feel like that's so true. At least, at least in my situation, I just knew that it was like the right move. It was so out of character for me to do something like that, but it just seemed like the right thing. And yeah, so I moved to Washington with him. We lived there until October of 2021. And then we moved here to Virginia on an internship. And then we got married in the beginning of 2022. 
and the rest is history basically. But yeah, that is our story of how we met each other. That's like the shortest possible version I can give you. I don't think I'm like really forgetting any major details, but yeah. So he is someone I have just known for many, many years of my life, which is really, really cool to go back and laugh about like people we went to elementary school with or be like, oh my God, do you remember so-and-so? And so, yeah, it's, it's really cool and very fun. And I'm very lucky to have the relationship I do. I did not picture that this is, this is the kind of relationship I would have been blessed to have, but I am so blessed and so lucky to have such a good, loyal, amazing husband in my life. So that's our story on how we met. But anyway, I think that's all the questions I'm going to answer for right now. I hope I got to the majority of them. Like I said, most of them were just about how I met my husband and stuff, which is funny that you guys wanted to know that, but I'm glad you did because I'm happy to share that story with you guys. So back to packing now that I took a break while I was telling you that story. And I'm just gonna continue cleaning out the cubbies here. A couple more things to tackle, taking down the tapestries and yeah. So let's get back to work. Last two things in the cubby are my half blanket and this, which, oh, I think you can actually see the fact that I plaided it, plaided it? I don't know how you would say that. I created a plaid pattern on this. You can kind of see what I've done here. And I got this far and I was like, whoa, this sucks. But it's like this giant poncho thingy. I don't know, I also felt like you couldn't see it enough. I don't know, but it is it is definitely cozy and feels like you're just wearing a big blanket, so maybe I actually need to finish it because it's kind of cute now I'm looking at it. But uh, yeah, so this is the first giant whip coming with us. And then the blanket, that's all we got. So cool, woohoo. Um, I'll probably try to add those last couple squares on, but this was, this was the moment I was like, blankets aren't for me. It's just not for me. Even such a cute blanket like this, no. N-O, not happening. Okay. So that's that, as you can see. We got it all cleared out here. Cleared out here, we have those couple little things left. And then the desk just needs to get cleared off. That all needs to get pulled out. Take all these down. Oh crap, I forgot about that. Okay, we'll have to do that too. It has to look worse before it can look better. So, let's keep chug-a-lugging along. Okay, I just pulled my last miniature down from the shelf it was on, so I thought I would show you really quick before it gets packed up. This is what it looks like inside. So in case you haven't seen one before, this is kind of what they are like. You build every single piece in here, every single mini itty bitty down to like, you can see the carrots, the potion bottles. You make those fruit slices in there, all the stuff. And it used to light up. I need to put new batteries in it. Here's something you can maybe look forward to on my channel if you're into miniatures or think you could be into miniatures. They're just the cutest things ever. I love them. So yeah, I just thought I would share this with you and show you what I'm talking about when I'm talking about miniatures. So my other one is a flower shop um, in case you'll be interested in that whenever that comes eventually. <laughs> okay guys, look how sad my wall is. Okay guys, it's actually a completely different day. It is the next day and we're here packing again and I just thought I completely forgot to film an outro for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's very different from my channel, but as you know, this is just what's going on in my life right now. So I hope you still enjoyed it nonetheless and I hope you learned a little something about me that was interesting to you maybe or just cool to know. 
Uh, anyways, that is all I have for you this week. Thank you so, so much for watching if you made it to this point of the video. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. I put out new videos every Monday and occasionally on Thursdays. Like this video if you liked it. Share it with your other crochet friends and I will be seeing you guys in my next one. Bye!